Hello everyone, and welcome back to the jungles of the Fruitleys tribe, where we are going to pick up right where we left off last time. So if you would like to know why there is a Mama Verina attempting to eat poor little Wakame, who is now bleeding out. He has taken so much damage, it is so good that he ate that healing fruit before he tried to leap to the defense of his adopted tribe. Uh, then you definitely need to check out the previous episode. So last time we figured out what we were we're doing with our wonderful persimmon and Coco. Both of these girls being signs for the future of our Fruitleaf tribe, for how they need to take over the island, and also a gift from a sister goddess, from the cookie goddess niece to her sister goddess, the moon mother bat, whose name has actually been forgotten through the passage of time because her link to the Nishling lands have become so weak. But I am so excited to carry on with the story, so I'm just going to get to it. Uh, and as usual, there is the link in the video description to our wiki, which will hopefully be maintained by some of you amazing people to help everybody out, including myself, with keeping track of what is going on with the story. And I see you over there, Carnu. Don't think that you have yet escaped my wrath, you very handsome horned um, fruit stealer. Uh, Karnu here is the wanderer, even though he has sticky tongue and toxic body and recessive stinky tail. I, and he has terrible fertility and I just really feel like the tribe would be trying to defend this island since it is already besieged when it comes to the invasive plants and the very, very, I think this is, yep, the very evil termites. Oh no, and now this barina has become bad? <gasps> it was a friendly marina and now it's not. It has sensed food. Kiwi, you're bleeding. You got attacked by the friendly marina. This is betrayal. We have been betrayed. I cannot believe this. Oh my gosh, there's a lot going on right now. Okay, well, let's go ahead. Wakame, I had no idea because you would have no attack that you literally cannot sting this barina. But apparently Wakame cannot sting this barina and use his wonderful scorpion tail effectively. We're gonna try again. Go, go! Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and I just heard Kiernu. <gasps> He's stealing some fruit again! No, we are literally about to starve. This is so unacceptable. Get out of here. Get out of here. Like, okay, we're gonna have to come down. Oh my gosh, he ate all of the fruit. This is terrible. And Coconut only has two days left to live. Oh my gosh, this is absolutely unacceptable. I hope you eat those invasive fire termites and your tongue burns out. Um, goodness me, I'm a little protective of this tribe. Oh gosh, yeah, we really have like nothing to eat. This is gonna be quite tricky. All right, we're gonna try to get some food here. We're gonna have to eat from the invasive plants that we want to get rid of. Um, and of course, Squashy last time, even though Kiernu clearly is nothing but trouble, fell for those long, beautiful antlers of his. And she just couldn't, she just couldn't resist those antelope horns, I should say, not antlers, were just too much. She was swept off her feet and then promptly abandoned by this rapscallion fiend. Out with you, Karnu, out. Shoo. Uh, we'll have to deal with him in just a minute. We're still starving to death, still being attacked on all sides. Clem is actually a fantastic gatherer with that three collecting. So we're going to snag the food there. These are now danger termites, so we cannot get any more food from that spot. We at least have enough food to survive the day. Kiwi is now bleeding uh, and under attack. I think Lurzu is going to rush over to try to help his his adopted sister. Kiwi is probably going to have to flee. Oh no, she didn't flee. She ate a berry. Kiwi, now is not the time for food. And if I put you in the water while you're bleeding, the Ray's Arena are going to make quick snack work of you. Oh boy. Uh, all right, we'll have little artichokes start working his way over too. Um, Hmm, I guess we're just gonna grab that and let the, the plant regrow because we do want to do battle with these plants quite often. That's one of our goals for this tribe. To fight and fight and fight and never give in until these plants are gone. Which unfortunately, our poor little fruit leaves don't know that the roots are too deep on the carnivorous plants. They will never quite leave, but perhaps they will get lucky and have a blessing from the moon mother bat. But until then, they will never rest against its evil. All right, and Kiwi, Oh, Kiwi, you have a little mask. 
I remember seeing this before. Oh, wow, Kiwi, your eyes are so cute and your nose is the cutest little twirly little, like look at her nostrils. I've never really taken enough time to get in close. And even though she is currently besieged by a not so friendly Berina betrayal, I cannot believe that we have been betrayed by this Berina. We will never ever again think that we can trust them clearly, not with the Fruitleys Island. Uh, but I've never taken the time even even with the Berina about to eat us, to appreciate how adorable the nose is. There's just a cute little twirly nose. <laughs> Kiwi, you've got such a cute nose. And you're also like being attacked. So, all right, we're gonna have her fight back. I think, I think she was a little slow on the uptake, but she is now ready to admit Berina betrayal. She has been betrayed by the Berina and uh, she is going to fight for her life as we will fight for this jungle. Also back here, Radish is kind of missing out on all of the fun because he hears something. And what he hears is the friendly, the friendly peaceful bear. Um, Radish gets a little stressed a little bit easy. So I'm gonna say he's going to let out a bit of a scream and he's going to throw some nesting material at the bear, not as an offer of friendliness, but more in sheer terror of meeting the bear. The bear was our friend back when Kiwi, the first Kiwi, not Kiwi who just got betrayed by a Berina Kiwi, she's named after the Kiwi who died. Um, but the first Kiwi I think became friends or was trying to become friends with the friendly Berina, but I could see Radish, who is just trying to figure out how to get around this blockade so that he can go back over to his family uh, and help out. I mean, look at that. That's like a perfect blockade. Two tile coverage on this tree, one on this tree, two on this tree. We literally can't get around this. But he is going... Well, I mean, we can. We just have to go around it. We can't get through it. Ugh, if we could fly, maybe. Or maybe that'd be a Tarzan situation and we'd crash into the tree. I'm not sure. In any case, Radish pushing his way through the grasses, trying to find his way back to his family so that he can see how they are doing, attempting to call out for Lurz Lurzu, was it? No, Lurzu's the jerk. Who's our good guy? Yeah, no, Lurzu's the good guy. What's your name, jerk? Karnu. Trying to find where his adopted brother Lurzu went off to. He parts the grass and sees these eyes. These eyes staring at him. Yes. Yes, Radish. I too would scream. Even with the adorable little teddy bear ears, I too would scream upon seeing that unflinching gaze. And I would throw a bunch of, of sticks in his face as well, which thankfully for the peaceful bear is a sign of friendship. So we'll have to see how that uh, finishes up with Radish there. All right, and then down here, the Berina battles continue. <gasps> you did it, Ginger! Huzzah! Huzzah! All right, Ginger is going to come over and he is going to try to stop Wakame's bleeding. We have a friendly Berina, but we know better. We will have to decide, do we wish to attack the friendly Berina, which is quite tragic as it is an infant. Uh, well, it's a teenager at this point. However, it is an invasive species on this island and you know how we react to invasive species. Uh, or if we had more food, we might consider offering it some food as a uh, bribe to leave the island and leave us alone. But we'll have to see how that settles out. Meanwhile, I think that Palm has possibly Hmm. Possibly, perhaps. Okay, that's a, that's pushing it a little bit. Uh, she's ready to go into labor, I think. So we're gonna have her make a nest, kind of, in a very startled manner. She didn't expect that to happen so quickly. And Clem will come down to be by her side, and she'll go ahead and have a little bit more food. But I do think it's about time for her to give birth. I should have probably put her in this nest, but Palm's a little bit of of a flighty thing. She was totally on her own as a child, a little orphan of the forest. So I could see how she would be too scared to move since we literally just took out that Berina and there is literally another one in the grasses. And instead, the entire situation sends her into a bit of a fit that begins the birthing process. Uh, and now back over here, we're going to have Coconut, with only two days left, begin the slow journey 
of hopping over to the heart of the island, the spring at the heart of the island, where Coconut will soon step into the waters and leave her bones to be cleansed by the helpful Rezoina, who are sometimes snacks, perhaps sooner than later, now that Coco has water body. And, ooh, we should give her fishing tail. <gasps> water body and fishing tail. Yes, I think I want to do that. But I also think she has to have bat wing because she is a direct descendant. That's actually one of my rules and one of the things we needed to check today really quickly. All nichelings who are descendants of coconut and kumquat, not kiwi because the first kiwi died, have to have um, bat wing in their in one of their mutation menus so that we can really show that they are from the bat line and that would definitely give me a challenge to get new kinds of genes in but i think it would work out really well in our favor to make sure we continue to have bats so that's basically everybody except for wakame coconut palm and lurzu oh my gosh kumquat literally the father of the island so radish artichoke not lurzu Kiwi, so Kiwi, your parents, yeah, your parents are coconut and kumquat, so we need to give her bat wing. Uh, let's see, Clem already has bat wing. Palm has bat wing because she, she's from the original tribe too, so all of her descendants can have the bat wing as well, even if she doesn't. That's how she got left behind, I think. Uh, Ginger, Wakame doesn't have bat wing, but he doesn't, he's not supposed to. Star does, Squashy does. Uh, good. All right. That's everybody. Good, good, good. And we just have Star left. He's going to do a little exploring, trying to figure out where that accursed wanderer has gone off to. We will get him. Look, he's polluting the heart of the island. This is unacceptable. All right. Unfortunately, Kiwi has just been viciously attacked. Uh, but somebody has been born. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Rose Anna Anna. That's so funny. <laughs> I can't believe we ended up with Rose Anna Anna, like an actual name out of all of my randomization. Wow. She has toxic body recessive, albinism recessive, E and A immunity. She is a red little bird. Oh my gosh, I kind of want to name her like Robin or Cardinal or something like that. Uh, but Rose is perfect for her. Rose Anna Anna. I think I'm, I'm going to leave her name, just Rose Anna Anna. So we have little Rose Anna Anna. Um, and so she's like part flower, part banana tribe. She has bird beak, so she will be able to do collecting and digging and insect collecting. So she can actually do quite a bit, but unfortunately she would be quite low on the totem in terms of having a lot of prestige in the tribe. So most likely Droz Anna Anna will be uh, sent about to the edges to do some fishing, for instance, because she, or like helping out with the termites, but she may not be gifted one of the uh, fantastic stinky fruit trees, the gifts from the moon mother goddess, because they are for the bat line. And even though she is descended from the bat line, it would be very difficult to really establish that in the tribe. It'd be very, very hard for her to be like, I am a bat too, when she has literally no, no bat traits on display. Does she have any of them in her recessive? She doesn't even have any in her recessive. <gasps> she might end up as one of the, the lowest tier of the hierarchy of bats. Oh, that's, that's a little sad. What should we call the ones who are along the edges? Shorebirds maybe? I'm not sure, hmm. Bats. Oh, geez, the peaceful bear. Uh, the peaceful bear startled me. I'm gonna have to think. What do you guys think? So I know that like the lore line, L O R E. So like the story lore line, who can fly are the highest tier of bats. The one-winged bats or the creatures with bat heads, who are clearly of the fruit bat line, are like the second tier, and then the third tier would be like artichoke or Rose Anna Anna, who I guess I guess they would be considered hmm they they they're like family but they're considered to have very weak bonds with the jungle so huh 
Like maybe, maybe beech leaves, bird bees, nest leaves. Hmm. Maybe something to do with the ground. What do you guys think? You're so good at coming up with stories with me. I would really, I would love to hear your thoughts on what you think we should call the ones. Maybe uh, forest walkers. Ooh, maybe forest walkers. So the ones who are allowed to stay here because they are, I love artichokes colors, by the way, green eyes with those little dots. Uh, very green eyes. Oh, there. <laughs> He's so cute. I think we'll call them forest walkers for now. They're not wanderers, they're not invasive, they are part of the family, but they're considered to have very weak bonds with the, um, with the jungle since they don't display any bat characteristics. So they have a very weak bond with the moon mother bat, and they're forest walkers, so they walk, they don't fly, they can't fly. And yeah, Kiwi walks and she can't fly, but she's still like part bat so there's hope of flying in her line uh so yeah we'll call them the maybe forest walkers or maybe like moss huggers if you wanted to be like come up with with like ha huh, you're a moss hugger and i'm a bat if they wanted to be brats about it i don't know we're gonna have to think about that i like that twist in the lore that'll be fun to have added into the wiki uh all right so yes forest walker or, yeah, I think that's what we'll do for now. Because the whole point is that the bats want to learn how to fly. And a walker in the, implies two, two paws on the ground. And maybe, maybe gliders will be what we call the ones who have one bat wing. So if you're a glider, then we'll pretend they at least try to jump and glide a little bit with their bat wing. They can't fly, but they can glide. And if you're a forest walker, you can't even glide. Yes, I love it. I love it. Let me know what you guys think, because I love coming up with these stories. It just makes everything so much better. If you're not here for the roleplay, I'm not sure why you're here. All right, so little forest walker, Rose Ana Ana, and the Berina. Get him, Kiwi! All right. Lurzu is here to try to help. Little Artichoke is going to come over to help. Kiwi is bleeding out. We'll hopefully take care of things soon. Coco is... I think Coco and little Persimmon here are gathering wisdom from the edge of the heart of the jungle. This is actually Coconut's last day. That's very difficult for me to wrap my heart around, by the way. And this is Kumquat's last day. Uh, and I'm, I... Oh no, I don't think he's going to be able to make it into the water. No, come quiet! Oh, I don't think he'll be able to make it to the water. That's so sad. Also, Ginger, where did our food go? Where did all that food go? Who stole my food? Wakame! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm so mad right now. That was a lot of food. We kind of needed that. Was it you? You have not been forgiven. This Berita just ate its mother! This is truly a Berina betrayal. I cannot believe this. Get out of here. Oh my gosh. I think Palme would be like freaking out. She just accidentally walked right up to this Berina. Oh my goodness. We've got to hurry and eat. Clem, get us more food. We don't have enough food, Clem. Ah, does anybody have any more food? Oh geez, not you again. Stop stealing my food. I need that to survive. You jerk. Get out of here. Oh my gosh, Carnu! How are you healed? He ate a healing plant on his own. He is stealing the riches of the jungle. This is why we... Oh my gosh, we're gonna starve because of him. I can't believe this. This is why we must remove the outsiders. They can even... Somehow, they have even figured out how to eat the healing fruit. My jaw's on the ground, because I don't think I've ever seen them eat the healing fruits as as wanderers before. I mean, I think I have like once or twice, but jeez. Uh, is there any food over here, peaceful bear? We need help. Oh, there's a deadly plant right there. Well, it could yank you off the cliff if you go that way. Thank you for the warning, healing, uh, like friendly bear. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try coming this direction then. 
Oh my gosh. But alright guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it here because we have a lot- like I'm really glad we developed the forest walking and the gliders and the bat like tears because that's gonna help explain why creatures like Rosanna, Anna for instance, would perhaps not be allowed to inherit a stinky fruit tree if there was a glider or if there was a bat. Uh, it, in residence who wanted the stinky fruit tree instead. Now we know that here, Berinas always represent betrayal, and so do wanderers. And unless there is a member of the tribe willing to vouch for the wanderer, willing to fight one of the carnivorous invasive plants for the sake of the wanderer or with the wanderer, uh, we're gonna get rid of them. And also, I just want one last day to say goodbye to Coconut and to Kumquat here in this tribe. We said goodbye to them in the Fruitling tribe in our stream some time ago, but it just means a lot to be able to to watch the first the first members of our tribe as they as they leave. So Thank you guys so much for joining us. If you could, do please leave a like to toss a delicious stinky fruit to this half-starved tribe. And if you would like to join us, do please consider subscribing to become a member of our Nishling Pantheon to watch over this and hundreds more adventures. Thank you guys so much for sharing your time with me, and I will see you next time. Bye bye <laughs>